Could the Twins' next move be for a right-handed first baseman? couple of guys, maybe intriguing, left on the free agent market. We're going to take a look on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. It is Wednesday, January 25th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Lockdown. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown today to get started. Again, this is Nash Walker. Three seasons, four off seasons, hosting a daily show on the Minnesota Twins. Three days a week during the off season and writing about the Twins for three seasons, four seasons now, and four off seasons. Ton of work and a ton of off-season pondering, looking at the free agent market, wondering who the Twins may sign next. It's been a busy off-season, and I don't particularly think the Twins are done here on their roster. I don't think uh, the opening day roster is the one that's together right now. I think there's going to be some changes, and I think one could be at first base slash DH, and there's a couple of guys. We've seen the name this off-season, Luke Voigt, uh, Yuli Gurriel. We're going to look at both of them today, whether they fit. and if they do, why? And if they don't, why? And both are coming off down years, both less than a win above replacement in 2022. So it's not glamorous. But again, these sort of fringe additions, Michael A. Taylor, you know, fringe additions, maybe another right-handed reliever. I think the Twins could use one. Late fringy additions can make a big difference. And they can make a big difference in matchups. They can make a big difference in depth when guys go down, who's there to pick it up. Michael A. Taylor, much better backup center field option than Gilberto Salcino. We went over that yesterday in, in last night's show after the Twins traded for Michael A. Taylor. What are we looking at now at first base? Because the Twins traded Luis Arias. He was their basically everyday first baseman down the stretch in 2022. He's no longer on the team. Figure Alex Kirloff is going to play a lot of first base. I did wonder, and Tom Fromme had a video, and I was watching Tom, and he was talking about the Luis Arise trade. And he said, if the Twins knew or if they would have known they were going to trade Luis Arise, would they have kept Gio Urshela? Keep Gio Urshela at third for $10 million, move Miranda over to first when you trade Arise, and then you have that platoon, Kirilov and Miranda at first base. I think they viewed Gio Urshela at $10 million as just that's, that's out of what they want to pay for Gio Urshela. And additionally, I think they really want to give Jose Miranda, a chance to play third base every single day defensively. And we went over maximizing offensive output at each position. Miranda's bat is more valuable if he can play a good third base or an average third base defensively than it is playing an average first base defensively. So they're buying into that. And I support that. I support trying Miranda over there. It's his natural position. It might not go well, but I'm all for just giving him the keys and saying, you play third every single day. This is your position you know, 70% of games you're going to play third. This is your spot. Against lefties, I think Miranda's going to kick over to first potentially, and Kyle Farmer will play third, which is part of this equation. Why would the Twins need another right-handed first baseman if against left-handed pitching, they can just put Kyle Farmer at third and bump over Miranda? I would say a platoon partner with Alex Kirilov in general is probably something they need to think about. Alex Kirilov, I'm hoping... He comes into camp. He's ready to go. Even if he is, let's say he's healthy. He's he's ready to go on opening day. He gets his swings in. They're easing him in. He's ready to face right-handed pitching. He's still, I, I don't think, going to play every single day. And that's because of his wrist and because of the platoon matchup. He's a left-handed hitter. I don't think he's going to face righties and lefties. So the Twins could use a platoon partner with him. Sounds like they view Kyle Farmer as a potential left fielder against left-handed pitching. You could start him in left field in that platoon matchup, and then that opens up first base if you're not comfortable starting Kirilov against lefties. So they could bring in a right-handed first baseman to platoon. Also, DH is open, and they want to shuffle guys through. They want to move Buxton through. They want to move Larnick through, Kirilov through, Correa through. They want to move guys through the DH spot. I understand that as well, but you can still add another bat here. There's nothing wrong with adding one more bat. The only problem with adding another bat is, A, they might 
be poor. You know, they might not hit at all. And you're giving away at bats to Luke Voigt or Yuli Gurriel when they're kind of over the hill, when it could be going to somebody else. And B, I think overall on the roster, it could create sort of a crunch. It could create sort of a tight situation where you have to move. Now Larnick has to start at AAA. And now, you know, Matt Wall, there's two guys behind, not one. And the roster's cramped with really slim skill sets. Like if you sign Luke Voigt or Yuli Gurriel, their ability is very, very narrow because they don't play anything other than first base or DH. I mean, Yuli has played other positions and Miami reportedly wanted to play him at third and second and bounce him around. He's 38 years old. Miami can do that. I wouldn't want the twins to do that. If you're going to sign Yuli Gurriel, he's playing first base in DH and Luke Voigt mostly DH last year. I don't mind adding another bat to this lineup. So I want to look at both of these guys today, Voigt and Gurriel, who provides a better fit, not only in the lineup and defensively, but in the clubhouse and prior relationships are factored in here. Yuli, Yuli Gurriel played for the Astros with Carlos Correa, played for the Astros last year with Christian Vasquez, is known as like a veteran presence and has a ton of postseason experience. So all of those things are going to factor in here. Luke Voigt is younger. A lot going on. I think intriguing for both of them. I'm going to tell you why after this word from FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here. The conference championship matchups are set. San Francisco heading to Philadelphia in the NFC championship game. Cincy going to Kansas City in the AFC championship game. And we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. That's FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. All in an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You get the Twins close to 3-1 to one to win the American League Central right now. If you like that line, go play. Put 5 bucks on it. Football fans, don't miss out on this weekend's action. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thanks for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day. Lockdown MLB Prospects is great with host Lindsey Crosby. He's a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. So let's look at these two. Start with Luke Voigt. He's going to be 32 in three weeks. Started with the Nationals last year, then moved over to San Diego. Of course, I think Twins fans remember Luke Voigt in a Yankee uniform. In the COVID season in 2020, he was terrific. He was the Yankees best hitter basically in 2020 was awesome since then it's been just like a slow decline and then kind of a bigger drop off this year he hit 226 with an on-base percentage at 308 and I have a little stat cast screenshot here you can see on YouTube this is this is Luke Voigt and this is a good representation he's big burly right-handed barrel percentage 94th percentile in barrel rate so he hits the ball super hard on the barrel but one the first percentile in whiff rate, ton of swing and miss 31 and a half percent strikeout rate last year, but a walk rate at nearly 10%. So he's your prototypical right-handed grip and rip slugger, not worth a win above replacement last year. You're kind of betting on a comeback at 32 that he's going to have a comeback here and is going to be closer to 2021, which is an above average player and above average hitter. He was an above average hitter, but not for a first base or a DH man in 2021. 359 expected weighted on base average in 2022, 322. You're hoping that he bounces back to 2021 status. He's a prototypical burly right-handed, you know, in his 30 slugger who you'd sign for one year and three to 4 million, but he's not because he has reverse splits in his career. And I wonder if this has impacted teams interested. I've wondered if it's impacted his playing time. If he was just had normal splits, which means he hits lefties better than righties as a left-handed hitter or as a right-handed hitter. You wonder if the twins will be more interested here and maybe they still are, maybe they're not, but he hit 174 with a 569 OPS against lefties in 2022 in his career, reverse splits good against right-handed pitching in his career. Not so good against lefties, which is weird for a slugging right-handed hitter 
kind of like we saw with Miguel Sano down the stretch of his twins career. And he's still a free agent down the stretch of his twins career. Didn't really hit lefties at all. Like it was hitting righties better than lefties, which is weird. And I think for the twins that matters because they're pretty left-handed still without Luis Arise, they're pretty left-handed. So that's something to consider here. He was mostly a designated hitter in 2022 in his career, negative 22 outs above average at first base, negative 26 defensive runs saved in a limited sample in 2022. He was okay at first base, more league average defensively. So what you're getting with Luke Boyd, he's going to be 32 or he's 30. He'll be 32 in three weeks. What you're getting is a burly slugger. Who's going to hit some huge home runs has 30, 35 home run upside if he clicks, but he's going to swing and miss a ton. He's not a very good defensive first baseman. He's going to mostly DH probably. And you wonder like how much value can he provide against left-handed pitching? That's, that's a question mark with him as is the defense, as is the swing and miss. And that's why he's still a free agent, you know, looking for deals this late when most of the free agent class has been picked over. But the positives with him are the huge power. He has massive power. If you can tap into what he had going as a Yankee and in 2021, then you got something. You got a legitimate DH and a legitimate platoon partner, even if it's not a clean platoon because of his splits. You have a legitimate platoon partner who can play and who can hit uh, in Luke Voigt. The other guy I looked at here and is actually is more interesting to me, and I wanted to come into this with an open mind to both, but Yuli Gurriel is more interesting to me even at 38 years old because of the profile and because of that postseason factor, veteran factor. I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for that. How much value is that really? I don't know. It's subjective and there's no way to put a number on it. But I, I believe and I buy into that and I buy into the Correa, you know, Gurriel relationship and them leading this team. Those things are attractive to me. I kind of fall for it. But Yuli Gurriel was was much worse than Luke Voigt offensively in 2022. So I understand, you know, the avoidance of Gurriel. And, you know, I tweeted about him and people were like, Oof, really, Yuli Gurriel? And here's why. He hit 242 with a 288 on base percentage. OPS plus at 84, that's 16% below league average as a first baseman in 2022. So much different though than Luke Voigt, like completely different profile, like a third of the strikeout rate, 12 and a half percent strikeout rate, 5% walk rate. So he's going to put the ball in play, but he doesn't hit the ball very hard at all. Like Luke Voigt, he's not going to swing and miss much at all. Like Luke Voigt does he puts the ball in play a lot, but he doesn't draw any walks low on base percentage, at least in 2022. And he's more traditional as a right-handed hitter. He had a 740 OPS against lefties in 2022 compared to Luke Voigt's 569. But Yuli cannot hit righties anymore. Like that's, you got to protect him. So what you're talking about here is a short side, first base DH of the platoon, Yuli Gurriel at age 38. Now you're wondering why he's not signed. <laughs> it's like, there's not much roster utility for these guys. And for, for Gurriel especially, I think, the roster utility is less because you cannot start him against right-handed pitching. You can make that argument for Luke Voigt. You can't start him against left-handed pitching. I mean, he hit 174 against lefties last year with a 298 on base percentage. Yuli Gurriel had a 298 on base percentage against lefties as well, but slugged 441 and hit 265. The interesting thing about Gurriel, and when I think about those Astros World Series teams, he always comes to mind. He wasn't like a face of it because – Altuve and Correa and Bregman and all those guys were especially the face after the cheating scandal came out. But Gurriel was a big part of that as a veteran presence, their first baseman. And he was absolutely terrific in 2021. He was the batting champ in the American League, hit 319 on base percentage, 383. So Gurriel lost almost 100 points in on base percentage and lost over 100 points in slugging percentage from 2021 to 2022 his season also ended before the world series i believe a knee i think it was a knee problem his season ended early he had a 131 ops plus in 2021 he was awesome for the astros in the heart of their lineup very very good in 2021 and just throughout that stretch throughout the the astros reign that still seems like it's going he he was great for them Sands 2022 when their pitching staff was just incredible. Yuli Gurriel was really not not a contributor much on that team. He did well in the playoffs. He always has done well in the playoffs. At least my my bias remembers him getting hits in the playoffs. Career at first base plus 15 in defensive runs saved, so he saved 15 runs defensively. 
but even that went down in 2022. He was negative two and negative nine in outs above average at first base. Is he cooked at 38? Probably. I mean, he probably is. If you want to buy into, he's going to bounce back to be the 2021 Yuli Gurriel or at least a version of it. I wouldn't like laugh you out of the room because that was not that long ago, but this is usually the age where guys tend to, to kind of come on the downturn and someone who comes to mind for me, a designated hitter is Edward Encarnacion who went from feared, scary as you know, recent as 2019 signs with the white Sox, awful with the Sox, And now he's just gone. I haven't heard from Encarnacion. I haven't seen his name anywhere forever. And I remember the, coverage and the reaction to him signing with the White Sox was oh man like they got one of the best designated hitters in baseball because he was at that time and then all of a sudden he's done in his late 30s and that's kind of how it goes for a lot of guys they're just done maybe that's the case for Nelson Cruz I don't want to believe it until I see it with Nelly but maybe that's the case for Yuli Gurriel maybe this is just it and he hit that in 2022 at 37 years old and now he's just going to try to snatch you know get on somewhere and played against lefties and be a veteran presence. And if he's that guy, I think he's a fine ad for the twins. I think there's value uh, in that, you know, in the clubhouse factor, it's, it's subjective. Again, it's hard to, to actually quantify that. Neither of these guys really gets me excited. I, I mean, we're at the end of the off season. There's really nobody left on the free agent market outside of jerks and pro far, Michael Waka guys. We've, We've discussed for the Twins and their fit with the Twins, and that was mostly before they re-signed Correa because they needed another you know, right-handed bat, and they still do. They still need another right-handed bat, I would argue. For Gurriel and Voigt, completely different profiles, really completely different players. Luke Voigt is thirty, going to be 32. He's big, burly slugger. Yuli Gurriel is 38, contact-oriented, kind of over-the-hill veteran first baseman who would probably be like a vibes guy for the Twins. He'd be like part of their vibe of the season neither has great roster utility both would probably push trevor larnick back to triple a so it's not ideal to sign either of them with Voigt, you're getting some upside you're, you're getting the potential that he you know finds something at first base in dh when he's not that old and he's been there before he's been good before you're betting that he bounces back he has a nice year and really overvalues the two or three million that you give him that the return on investment is is great for what he provides you as a first baseman. DH can start against righties. You give him a chance against lefties and he produces and he produces, you know, 100, 120 OPS plus hits 20, 25 home runs. Think like CJ Crone when the twins brought CJ Crone on board. Think of that impact for Luke Voigt. It was great. You know, CJ Crone, especially in the first half before the thumb injury, 25, you know, 25, 30 home run power and solid first baseman, valuable. You know, it's valuable. And they brought CJ Crone on to do that with Luke Voigt. And CJ Crone, I believe, was non-tendered. And the Twins picked him up, if I remember correctly. So it's kind of a similar situation. Luke Voigt, late in the offseason, still here. If this was a year before or two years before and he was a free agent after 2020, he's probably looking at three or four-year deals. Honestly, after the COVID season, he was that good. But now he's just he's going to pick up a one-year deal to probably be on – I don't know if he's going to be on the short side of a platoon because he didn't hit lefties last year to to play sparingly for a team. Maybe it's Washington again. He played for Washington at the beginning of half or the first half of last year, then was traded to San Diego. I don't know where he ends up. Maybe it's Minnesota and they see some upside there. And then with Gurriel, the it's a different situation. It's a different situation for him because he's late in his career, but it's it's a career in the last couple of years that's been really successful on a on a personal and a team level for Yuli Gurriel. So it's, it's different for him. There's this more of this feeling like maybe he can get that back. Like what if he was in between 2021 and 2022, I'm actually going to look and see what that in between level would be because he was very good in 2021, awful in 2022. If he gave you the in between of those two seasons, he hit 242 in 2022, hit 319 in 2021. You're thinking, you know, maybe 270 batting average, 320 on base percentage, slugs 400, you know, maybe a 110 OPS plus for Yuli Gurriel. Yeah, valuable. I think you, I think he'll be valuable for whoever picks him up, but maybe he's just who he was in 2022, which is over the hill veteran at 38 years old. And that's absolutely possible. 
They also won the gold glove in 2021 for the, whatever that's worth. Uh, defensively, has a good reputation defensively. If you take the last three years combined for Yuli Gurriel, batting average 272, on base percentage 326, slugging percentage 406 for an OPS at 732, OPS plus at 103, and better against lefties, you know, above average against lefties. Yeah, fine player. You know, fine player to bring aboard late in an offseason as a platoon partner with Alex Kirilov, provide some depth on the roster. He can DH against lefties. Fine to bring on board. You know, fine to bring on board. If the Twins did so, I would I would support it at one year and two to three million. I think the same is true for Luke Voigt. They're the types of players, if they bring them on board, it's like, okay, you know, I, I support that. I support bringing them, giving them a chance. For Voigt's case, maybe there's more upside, but you could argue that there's more upside with Gurriel because he's closer to being well above average. He's just much older. He's much older than Luke Voigt. So that feels like it's further in the rear view, even though it's closer in the rear view uh, for, for Gurriel rather than Voigt. Let me know your thoughts on either of them. If you think either makes sense, if you're just not interested, if you're interested in somebody else, can I interest you in Miguel Sano on the free agent market? <laughs> if you think to you bring back Miggy or somebody else who's still a free agent, uh, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every single day. And make your second listen, the Lockdown MLB Prospects show hosted by Lindsey Crosby. He's a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you so much. Have a great day, and go Twins.